This is Professor Darif Seitz. This Java tutorial is about graphical user interface component classes. This diagram shows the main classes involved in GUIs and not all the functions are shown here, only some key ones on this diagram. We'll look at another diagram that goes into more detail on some of these components. Up in the upper left is the component class. A component is something that has a graphical view. It can be seen and visualized, displayed in the GUI. It has a paint method, a repaint method for drawing, and many other methods that are not shown in this diagram. Notice that all these classes inherit from component, so they're all GUI components. Container is the next level down. A container can contain other components inside it. Notice that they all inherit from container as well. So they have the ability to contain other components. Next down on the left is the window class. The window, you can set the size of it there, set its visibility. It is necessary to set its visibility to true through that set visible function when you run your application. Otherwise, your window will not appear to the user. Frame and then JFrame on the bottom left. JFrame is the class that you will extend directly in your GUI application that you create. It has a get content pane function to return a container where you will add the different components that will be seen in your window. J component here is an abstract base class that has some functionality common to all these other components. It has its own paint override. You can set the background, the color there, set the border, set the enabled to true and false, whether the component can be um, active or not. You know, it'll be grayed out or it'll be seen. If it's grayed out, you'll see it, but you can't do anything with it. And if it's enabled, it's just a regular way it looks. Visible is a little different. Set visible. If you set visible to false, you will not even see your component. So those are key functions. Set the font, the foreground color. Set the opaqueness of the background, whether you want your, your background to be seen or to allow the background behind your component on the window to come through and set tooltip text, the little pop-ups windows when you position the mouse over a component. Here looking through the various components we see a label and they start many of them start with J. This is the swing um, package Java X swing, the newer generation of GUI components. So J label is a display only text area uh, on this on, in the window. It can also be an image, but it's not editable. J list is a list that takes up space in your window. J combo box is a drop down list. It, you can click it and bring it down on demand. Over here, abstract button, that's a a base class for various buttons. We have a J button, that's a command button. A toggle button is another um, base class. A radio button, where you can have a group of buttons and only one of them, they're mutually exclusive, can be selected at a time. A checkbox is a toggle button. You can check it on or off. You can have groups of them and any number of them can be on or off. A text component is a a base class here for the text fields. We have a J text field. That's an editable text field. A single line. J text area allows multi-line text and, and it's referred to as rows and columns. The number of characters is the columns and the rows is the number of lines. And a J password field inherits from J text field. That's where when you enter the text you can't see the characters. There's asterisk or whatever character you set up to be the, the security character to protect the view of your password. So again here on this summary diagram 
we see mainly that everything's a component, container, and the hierarchy here of the, the key components that are used in, our, in the user interfaces. Going down to the next page in this, this uh, diagram, this page, components detail, goes into a little bit more detail on some of the components here. We see again the, the components that we saw, the component, the container, J component, and a note that everything inherits from J component on this diagram. But we're going to focus on the, the gadgets, the widgets themselves that we see here. So text, J text component is a base class for some of these text fields. It has a get text set editable to make whether to set it some um, allowing the user to enter data into it or not enter data into it even though it is editable you can turn that off set text in it constructors here for a j text field it's a constructor with no parameters or here's one with columns the number of characters to allow them to enter so if it was set to for example 12 when they keyed the twelfth character, that would be the last one that they'd be allowed to key. Typing any more, nothing would happen in the field. J text area, we see constructors there with the number of rows and the number of columns to use for the text area. Another one with the text to put in there and the rows and columns. The password field here. Password get password returns a character array does not return a string as some of these other ones their get text returns um, a string. Over here on the left lower left we have a label J label you can in initialize uh, a label construct it with just text or with text in an alignment uh, telling it what kind of alignment to use. It's static fields that are available to align it left, centered, or right. And you can also in instantiate a J label with an image. So it doesn't have to be just text. It has the ability to be an image as well. And you can set text on the J label. J list here. You can get the currently selected index. You can get the currently selected value, set the selected index, set the selected selection mode, whether it's single selection or multiple selection allowed in the list. Again, there's many more functions. This is just given an, an overview of some significant ones. The buttons, you can instantiate a button with text or with an image. Radio buttons, you can in the constructor indicate whether the button is to be selected or not and the label to use for the button the checkbox similarly whether it's selected or not in the label a button group is important concept for radio buttons a button group uh, you add radio buttons to a button group and that's what makes them mutually exclusive if you don't add them then they won't really function as they're supposed to so button group is a key player here in terms of radio button functionality the J combo box is a drop down list as you can see here you can get that get the item count the number of items in it set it selected index get the selected item you can set the maximum row count of how many uh, how far you want it to drop down when they click the little arrow to drop it down so this is some of the detail of course you can look in the Java API and, and see all the the functions available for all these components so again let's just take in the big picture go back to the previous page one more time so we see in this summary that the key players that you need to understand in order to work with a GUI application 
it's, it's important to know what's available to you at a very basic level, these basic controls, the labels, the buttons, the text, the list, and also the concept of a component and a container and the frame that you're using. So this, having this mental view uh, will help you when we look at an actual GUI application, uh, look at the code, which we'll be doing uh, in a subsequent tutorial.